So about four months ago, uh, my girlfriend and I took the day off from work and went for a walk in Central Park. Uh, just west of Sheep's Meadow, I gently steered her towards the courtyard of Tavern on the Green, where we had first met seven years ago. And to her surprise, there were some musicians there, and as they played, I asked her to marry me. And for some reason, she said yes, and so now I have a fiancé. But as I'm sure you have all guessed, because I'm standing up here speaking to you, she's not Jewish. And once the excitement of that first day dissipated, and we began planning our wedding, I came face to face with the reality of what it means to marry someone who is not Jewish in this community. BJ currently doesn't look kindly on what we are doing, and as a member of this community, that is very painful for me. Um, I, but I am not up here speaking to you because I'm angry. I'm not up here speaking to you because I'm running away, and I'm definitely not up here speaking to you because I'm different. I'm up here because I'm one of you, no matter who I love. I've been a member of B'nai Jeshrin for as long as I can remember. I went to Hebrew school here, I was bar mitzvahed here, um, I was in the Purim plays, you may remember me as Harry Potter and Harry Potter and the Magic Megilla. Um, <laughs> And I also helped to lead family services uh, for Kol Nidre and Rosh Hashanah over many years. I really found my Jewish identity in this amazing place. But for the seven and a half years that my fiancé and I have been together, it's deeply saddened me to know that despite these things, if we decided to get married, the rabbis could not perform my ceremony. My fiancé has been unbelievably supportive of my connection to Judaism. For, throughout our entire relationship, she has come to Shabbat dinners, seders, come to the services that I led, and really been a part of my Jewish life. When I said that I wanted to have a Jewish wedding, she immediately accepted and without hesitation agreed to be married by a rabbi. But she's an atheist and feels that it would be disrespectful or disingenuous to convert to a religion that she herself does not believe in. And just as she has been so supportive of my connection to Judaism, I support and respect her choices and beliefs. BJ prides itself on being a welcoming and loving community. And even when it comes to interfaith couples, BJ has made them feel at home. But being an interfaith couple that is already married and coming to BJ is very different than being a member who decides to marry someone who is not Jewish. An interfaith couple can come to BJ and find a home. A member who decides to marry someone who is not Jewish is sent away. I, as a member of this community, fully recognize the fears that this conversation brings up in many people. You worry about what does it mean for Jewish identity to be in a mixed faith household? What happens to Jewish culture when it's diluted by another culture? But if the fear is of losing Jewish identity, I want you to think about what it means for a couple in which one person is not Jewish to approach the synagogue and ask them and the rabbis to be a part of the foundation of their relationship. What does that say about their dedication to a Jewish identity? And then I want you to think about that same couple and their Jewish identity and the identity of their children when the synagogue turns them away. For many people, including myself, Judaism and the synagogue at which you grew up really are synonymous. They're one and the same. So when I feel like B'nai Jeshrin is rejecting me in some way, it feels as though Judaism is rejecting me. And I believe that it would be far too easy for someone who feels rejected by their synagogue to walk away from Judaism entirely. Opponents of intermarriage often cite um, Jewish uh, law as a, uh, to bolster their argument. And I, I am not an authority on religious law or Jewish law, but I do find it difficult to understand how a community that has made exceptions to rules that ban gay marriage, that ban female rabbis, decides now to draw the line at me and at intermarriage. It feels like th that choice is being made based on comfort rather than on religious law. Now, obviously, when it comes to intermarriage, I can only speak to my personal experience, but I do feel that I am up here representing something much larger than just myself. 
I'm not an anomaly. As many of you know, over 60% of Jews in America are intermarrying, and over 70% of non-Orthodox Jews are intermarrying. So what that means is that this is not some discussion we can just brush aside. This is a reality. But at the same time, I don't want you to look at me and see me as the representation of this issue. I actually happen to be the easiest version of this issue in some ways, because my fiance is someone who has absolutely no religion herself. I don't know what would have happened if my fiance was somebody who had a religion of her own or a strong religious belief. It's actually something that I struggle with. Would I have been able to be in a relationship with that person? How would I have felt about my children growing up in a household that had more than one religion? These are questions that are really hard for me, and I happen to be very lucky in that I will not have to struggle with these questions. But other people in this community do have to deal with this, and so it needs to be an important part of our discussion. For me, the way I've made my interfaith relationship work is through support of each other's beliefs. And so if that's the case, and if we as a community are asking interfaith couples to uphold Jewish beliefs and values, I don't see how we can then turn around and reject a non-Jewish partner's request for the same. I have heard people, as many of you I'm sure have, say that they will leave BJ if BJ has, decides to perform intermarriages. And this it really troubles me. I don't want this to be an us versus them discussion, because I really believe that we can find a common ground here. I would really like for those people who are here who feel that they would have to leave if BJ decided to perform, to perform an intermarriage, to think about the fact that I could be your son, I could be your brother, I could be your loved one. And if over 60% of American Jews are intermarrying, for some of you and possibly many of you, I will be. So before you decide that you would have to leave a place that would perform intermarriage, I want you to think about what you would do in that situation. And I fully recognize that some of you will still feel like you have to leave, but I also want to make clear that people already are, are leaving BJ due to the current policy. My generation's way of being Jewish will inevitably be different from the last. My generation's grown up in a world where our social circles are not defined by our religion, and so the people we end up spending our lives with may come from very different backgrounds. What this means is that these marriages are happening no matter what BJ decides. And so the difficult question that we have to struggle with, or at least that I am asking, is when we look back 10 years from now, what side of history do we want to say that we as a BJ community were on? Now, unfortunately, even if the BJ rabbis decide that they are going to perform intermarriage, it will be too late for me. I am incredibly lucky that I have found a rabbi who I have a very close relationship with who's going to perform my ceremony. But I still will not have been married by the BJ rabbis and by the leaders of my community, and I can't tell you how sad that makes me. I am one of you. I am a member of this community. I care deeply about this community. And I don't want anyone else in this community to have to feel the pain that going through this process and the sadness that going through this process has made me feel. So I want to ask a question, which is, what is gained from this community? What does this community gain by turning people like myself and my fiance away and telling us that to start our new life, we need to look elsewhere? How does this help this community stay vibrant? So I say we should help grow and strengthen this community by welcoming interfaith couples from the first moment they become engaged. And this is not going to be comfortable for everyone. But BJ has always prided itself, and we have always said that BJ is a home for anybody looking for a Jewish community. So let's make that a reality. Thank you.